Hi, I'm Michael Kaminsky, manager at Lander Branch Library and chairman of the Floating Collections Committee. Imagine that there is a way to upgrade customer service, improve the way the library uses available resources, and reduce the materials handling time for the staff, all at the same time. This is what Floating Collections proposes to do. A year ago, Assistant Director for Public Services, Kendra Tracta, formed the Floating Collections Committee to investigate the promises of this alternative model of collection management. Other members of the committee are Katie Enright, Head of Cataloging, Rolf Lawn, Manager of the Digital Services Department, Laura Villanueva, Head of Circulation, Margot Guzman, Collection Development Manager, and Cami Gunter, Branch Manager at McCreelis Library. going to let the patrons see new stuff on their shelves, even when it's not new, but it'll be stuff they've never seen before, and I think that will excite them a lot. Right now, circulation and floating collections. The way it works is right now, we get in items, it'll say, in transit to a certain location, check in item, yes or no, and we have to go through that, you know, question and that little click that says, yes, you know, it's ours, or no, it's in transit, keep it, or no, we don't want to print the, the transit slip. Well, now it's just always going to be yours unless it is a hold. Um, and so it's going to be one less thing that we really have to kind of keep an eye on, um, which is really exciting because one less thing to do um, in the background is something we can do for the patrons. So um, be excited. All of these items are clear charge. And we're really looking forward to floating collections and these items being on the shelves for patron to use instead of sitting here in these crates. Once we start floating, the collection development department will be impacted in two major ways. The first way can be looked at in terms of time savings. We're really going to be able to streamline our ordering procedures so that we'll be able to place the orders very quickly. The materials will then be able to get to their locations faster, much closer to publication date. Also, since we are spending a lot less time ordering, we have a lot more time to focus on staff and patron requests and to review titles that are not necessarily reviewed in the mainstream journals. Um, the second way that we will be impacted is in cost savings. We anticipate being able to buy fewer copies of some of the mid-level fiction titles. So if we buy fewer copies of those titles, we will have more money to buy titles that we ordinarily wouldn't have funds to purchase. Um, another way that we hope to um, save is through once media starts to float. We hope to see a lot less wear and tear on both the cases and the items themselves so that that would translate into much lower costs for replacing damaged items. So those are the two main ways that we see floating impacting collection development. One thing that will remain the same is our need for communication from central and branch staff about what is actually happening at your locations. We will still have some version of shared cards so that you will be able to suggest titles, place titles in those cards, not necessarily for your branch, but for the system as a whole. Before we begin floating collections, I hope that everyone has already been doing some weeding, particularly in the fiction, as this is where we will begin in February. As we continue and you receive books into your library, there are a few things to keep in mind. You will never be done weeding. When the book is in your library, it is now your book. Don't keep passing the trash around. This was sent to fill a hold. Remember that we are one library with multiple locations. Give something a chance before you weed it, either through passing it on to another library on your route or highlighting titles on a book cart. Central Library will still be a resource for last copies. So remember to weed now and forever, and that the weeding the trash can make it easier for your customers to find treasure. Some questions have come up about how we're going to evaluate the success of the Floating Collections program. Um, we're doing some benchmark measures before we implement, and then during each um, 
phase of implementation, we're going to be looking at statistics like holds, uh, how many holds are placed, how many are filled, um, circulation. We're going to look at the number of items in transit. For example, right now we're averaging 75% of items in transit are just going to their home location. So we want to look at how that's going to change. As we go through each phase of implementation, we're going to be looking at um, how things are going, and we really need to hear back from the staff and from patrons on how it's going and how we can make it better. With floating collections, items will be shelved where they are returned. As a result, patron interest will play a larger role in building collections. Instead of sitting in a crate somewhere, items will be almost immediately available for filling holds or for our browsing patrons to explore. Patrons will have and may even notice enhanced access to our system-wide and city-wide collection. Staff labor savings will afford us more time where we can work directly with patrons. Check out the information and FAQs on the library staff internet. Thank you.